five sub-watersheds within it. So for Brianne Flynn, the art of tracking population changes is far more labor-intensive than most people think. Hours and hours of mapping and um, searching for data. We had to find all the population data and the boundaries and the um, geographical information just from our own resources online. Flynn spent several hours a week in the fall semester using Geographic Information Systems, or GIS, tracking population change in a 55 square mile region covering parts of Morris and Somerset counties. What they have me doing is mapping population change within the Great Swamp watershed from the year 1990 to 2010 using population census data. Working with the Great Swamp Watershed Association, she helped them with their mission of working to ensure clean rivers and streams in the area. We would be able to pull the information that she was gathering to um, go to Madison and say, hey, your water quality has declined in this area and we've noticed your population has shot up in this region. There's probably a correlation, so why don't we work on some smart development techniques? Flynn's experience with GIS came out of a community-based learning class she took with biology professor Katherine Riamaki. An environmental sciences major and a civic scholar, Flynn says she volunteered her time because she wanted to make a difference. It's really important for me to do community service and do my part because um, I have certain things that I can contribute, like GIS is such a great skill. Flynn says her work with GIS is not over. I highlighted this small area in yellow and zoomed in on it, which is Newark, and that's the area that I'm looking at. She's hoping to use her skills for her honors thesis, which she says she hopes to help map the air quality in Newark. For Drew University, I'm Ted Johnson. So the EPA requires